So welcome to another video from theplayersaid.com. My name's Alexander. And I'm Grant, and this is a car video. This is not a just a normal video. <laughs> another yes. car video. Woo. So we are finished with WBC. You can see we're wearing different clothes. I swear it's not the same, Gerby. <laughs> <laughs> We've just had, what, four days of very hardcore gaming and interviews and video production, seeing friends, uh, and it's been a wonderful time. Yeah, frankly, it was it was a blast. Went very quickly. Yeah. Although I'm exhausted. And exhausted. I'm, I'm glad to be on the way home here Sunday morning. And once we get home, we'll do probably a, mo a much more formal kind of a debrief, kind of go through all the yeah. details of a bit of everything. But just on the way home, when we were talking about some of the kind of the peak highlights. And so we thought, let's just turn the camera on. Let's make a video. Let's concentrate and look at the road whilst we're driving. <laughs> and kind of just go through kind of top five real peak moments. And, and really, we, we discussed this. We could have very easily done a top 10. Oh, I, it could have been a top 15. Yeah. And you could have had a totally different top 15. And I would have agreed with every, every single one. Every one of them. Because all of it was amazing, pretty much. Well, it was, it was literally four days worth of a series of amazing top experiences uh, genuinely from, from one thing to the next now there were some things that we didn't enjoy sure but that wasn't the food that some of that was amenities based which I, right that's you know we really struggle with the food this is year what it is again. well and yeah we'll talk about that in the debrief yeah, a bit yeah. more detail but wbc is amazing we love it this was our third year going obviously haven't had it for the last couple of years so it was really cool to get back to it and so it was primed to be as good as we could make it. And I think yeah. we did a good, fun job of doing that. So let's dive right in. Do you want to start with number five? Number five. <laughs> my number five. Hold on, I'm going to have to draw on my I memory. I wrote it down bag. on the I know, but I'm also paper. driving. <laughs> All right. My number five it's was... Like, it's on our back seat. Yes. The vendor hall experience. So it, it's a, it's a week-long con. It starts, I think, the Saturday, you know, last Saturday, yeah, and goes through Sunday. Yes. So, in essence, it's like nine full days of convention, but the vendors don't arrive usually until Wednesday afternoon, and they don't set up and are open for business until Thursday. Yeah. And I think they're, was it like nine to six or nine to six thirty? I think it's... 10, I 10, mean, 10 to 6, 6 when it opens because they all go at 9 and yeah. kind of finish the day. Hang out. The day and... But it's, uh, and this year it was one room. I think the last time we went in 2019, it was two different rooms. Yeah, because they had kind of like a war game room mm -hmm. and then they had an extra section. In, for Euros yeah. and other type of gaming. Yeah. But it's, so they're there for three days. All of the major publishers are there and represented from... Um, I mean, let's just go around the room, right? It was Compass Games right up at the front. You've got Worthington kind of there in the center. Academy Games is there. GMT. And I don't know, are those... Yeah, they are GMT it's staff. GMT, I, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's GMT, yeah. Tony Curtis. It's, it's Tony right. Curtis yeah. and I think uh, others. Um, you, you have Decision Games that is not part of the main... Yeah, Decision Games is in the convention center in between yeah. the two big gaming halls but then at the back you had blue panther printing which represents multiple game companies from catastrophe games to white dog games holland spiel the historical gaming company shootsy games i think uh, they yes. have some copies uh, and, and uh, yeah mmp is there i mean they've mmp's in the back they yep. got all the asl stuff all the ocs bcs scs everything going on there as well so the experience of going in there is you it's like a kid in a candy store it's like christmas morning and it was one of the things i was looking forward to the most why in the hell I was looking forward to it, I don't know, because we have more games than we know yeah, what to do I, with. We need new games like we need a hole in the head, and yet... I would rather like a we, hole in the head. We, I, yeah, we... So, so yeah. But, a whole, but what, what I love about it, what you've alluded to is, it is a war game vendor yes. hall. And that's what's just so great about it. We go to Gen Con, we go to other conventions, and it's lots of board games and RPGs and lots of shiny things, and it's fun. With two or three war game publishers spread around, but yeah, that's and, it. And it's like maybe, or it's like Enterprise Games, do like the second yeah, hand stuff. Yeah, which is a great place. We love which Enterprise great, Games. But here it's like, 
all the big publishers and they're all mm. there. And this year was kind of a was so this year was a down year for the WBC. Normally Flying Pig Games is there, Lock and Load is there mm -hmm. as well. It, it, usually it's like even more, uh, and it, it, but it's just so fun to yeah. go in there and see it just lines and lines of just war games, and that's, it's cool to see. Well, it's and, you, and cool. you just go from vendor to vendor, and, and you talk to the proprietors there. You, you know, we talk to the Grant and Mike Wileys and Uva and, and Steve. Steve. I can't remember what his last name with Blue Panther was. His name is Steve. His last name is from Blue Panther. Okay, yeah, Steve from Blue Panther. Uh, you know, you talk to those guys. We talk to the MMP guys, and it's it's just very cool to, to to see the excitement and to feel that excitement and to frankly look around the room and see all these grown yards just spending their hard-earned money on these yeah. freaking games. And the games are somewhat discounted in in some ways because, well, one, you're not paying shipping. Yes. You're not going to pay the 10 to $20 for shipping. Sorry, those who are in uh, you, you know, Europe and, and other parts of the world. But they are also discounted. Um, for, for instance, Compass's games were, were roughly 20 to 30% uh, off of, discounted. Off of all the games that were there. It's not like, oh, right. here's the bargain ones. No, it's, it's, you're, you're getting their most expensive titles. That are normally 75 to $85 for... 60 bucks or, or, or 65 like the $120 games for like at 100 yeah so I, I don't know and, and we frankly we went overboard oh yeah it was we spent wild. way more money than I would ever want to admit uh, we we actually acquired was it 14 new yeah. games is that the number we put together yeah <laughs> 14 new games and a lot of those were brand new releases. A Victory Awaits yeah, from, from MMP. MMP, brand new. Uh, we got a couple of new White Dog games, solo games. Uh, the Knight, Volters Lead the Way by Herman Ludman. Yes. Uh, we got some Siege of Mantua from Hollenspiel. What was that? Uh, Solitaire Heading Forward? Uh, heading Forward, yes. That's a board game, not yeah. a war game. We, we got Nicaea, which was from last year, designed by Amabel. So, I don't know, I just had a blast. Yes. I've always wanted, or not always, I say always, Conquistadors from Compass Game from yep. about three years ago. It was $60. Huge three-inch box, and one of their nice upgraded three-inch boxes, and a fully mounted map board with six, six or eight counter sheets. I mean, fantastic. So, I enjoyed that, loved it, loved the atmosphere, the environment the opportunity to buy yeah. all those games. It's and great. I walked out of there and my wallet was screaming at me. Yeah, much lighter than it was walking yes. in. So my number five experience uh, at WBC was playing uh, a prototype copy of Blood and Treasure from Dan oh, Bullock. Such a great game. Yeah, so uh, Dan Bullock, if you don't know, he's designed 1979 Revolution in Iran, No Motherland Without. And he's working on a number of other games. We sat down and did a designer interview with him. He's a cool dude, too. Yeah. I like Dan. And, and it was that, you know, we've talked with him through emails and on, on uh, social media a bunch. I've so done several interviews with him. Very cool written interviews to meet with him in person. And he showed us a lot of games he's got in the pipeline. Mm -hmm. All of which are peak Dan Bullock, and, which I mean is something very unique about something typically unique as well. Uh, and he showed us Blood and Treasure, which is... Uh, more of a yeah. Hold, hold. If you hear that name, what do you think about? That's a great question. I think of yo ho ho and a bottle of rum. Absolutely. I'm thinking it's a pirate game. Piracy. I'm pirating things. So I'm <laughs> stealing money. That's what I think of. Blood and Treasure is a game about uh, being a private defense contractor in the U.S. Afghan War. Isn't that kind of like piracy? Well, five thousand the thesis of the game. Five thousand dollar golden. Toilet seat yeah. that's never made. It is. It is <laughs> a wonderful um, board game. Not it's really, a Euro, not, yeah, not a. It's war a game. Euro style game. It's you're you're a contracting company just trying to bid on and accrue money through winning government contracts. I think it's called obligations, but it's money. Oh yeah, obligation. Yeah, but it's money. Yes, and so because they're paying you up front. Yes, they pay you six dollars, which is probably the equivalent of. A five million dollar contract, yeah. and you you have an obligation to complete that contract and deliver upon it. Yes, but 
right? You don't get a whole lot from actually completing it. The victory points are scored on the money of yes. the obligation that you accrue. Yep. So getting the contract is where you get the points. Completing the contract, eh, not, not so incentivized to do it. But you're going to be inspected which hurts your reputation. So you do want to at least work on some things yeah. from time to time. But your reputation isn't as important <laughs> as it would be in other games. Yes. Which is it just it's, it's not a, the way you score points. It's a very bleak game, it's a very cynical game, it's yes, a very excellent I would game. Agree. All of it's based on a lot of research that Dan did, but we played a five player game of this, which is the max players that it can hold. And it, at five players, the board was very congested, mm. it was very tight. Uh, it's a not your average bidding game where you'd be trying to purchase something for the highest cost. You're trying to convince the government you're going to do it for the lowest cost mm -hmm. so that you win the contract. But if you offer, if you lowball everyone, you're, you're not making much money. You've got all these contracts, but and they're you're worthless. Get, you're taking on an obligation yeah. that could ultimately hurt you so in some ways. You're, you're, trying to, you're trying to find that middle ground of what's the lowest I can bid while still being profitable. Oh, you're trying to find the middle ground until a uh, ground until the late late game. Oh yeah, the late and game. And then it's a free for all. It's, it's just like what, a feeding frenzy. What can we scrape in at the yeah. end? Yeah, hilarious. But, you know, it's all sorts of you know, it's worker placement where you put them all out and then you resolve them all in specific order. If you play dominant species, kind of that style. Um, and it was just uh, the theme and the integration of the mechanics were so good, mm -hmm. and it's a lot of the kind of inverted economic principles that you get in Euros, and I love that because it makes you think about things in a different way. Just a, an absolute blast playing. Thing. Yeah. So that was my number five yep. experience at Gen Con. And frankly, any, not Gen Con, WBC. WBC. Yeah. Sorry, Strike Gen Con's that. Next. Gen Reverse Con's next it. week, it's yeah. on my brain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so my number four, let me see that list again. Ah, yes. So one of the things that we love to do when we go to these big conventions is to play big multiplayer war games. Yes. We played a lot of them. We'll talk about at least, well, we talked about Blood and Treasure. Yep. We'll at least talk about a couple of others that we played. Um, so we go there and we, t we took, what did we take, like six, seven games with us? Yeah, we took a bunch. And then we yeah, Pericles, a uh, Fire in the Lake, and others. So my number four was playing a full four-player game of Fire in the Lake. Yes. Which is a coin series game, the fourth volume in that series, done by uh, Mark Herman and Volko Runke on the Vietnam War. So it's a, it's a treatment of, of the Vietnam War basically from 1964. I think the latest cards are... It goes to, I think it's 64 to... 68? 69? I think it... Does it end in... Yeah, the card I mean, is Vietnam, printed in 68. I, right. But, it end, it, yeah, the game ends before I, 72. Like, and, it's way before And that. we know Vietnam d didn't just happen from 64 to 68, but, but that's, that's, that's kind of what the, what the period does. game... There's an expansion that covers the later part of the game, and then there's a prequel that's going to cover coming out. But yes. anyway, playing a four-player game of that... Which, any coin, you want to play It's fantastic. Play every time. And I think both of us, that is our favorite coin series game. Yeah, it's, I would say Hands that. down... Enjoy the theme a lot. Enjoy the interactions and the uh, intertwined nature of the of the four factions and the two faction teams. You know, the U.S. and Arvin working together, the VC and the NVA working together. Just a fantastic experience. I was really grateful to be able to actually play that four player. So it was me as the VC. Yep. I played as the U.S. Mike Heckman, our friend from St. Louis who played a lot of games with us over the weekend, was the Arvin, yes. the sniveling, backstabbing, do-nothing Arvin. Sorry, and no then, offense to anyone. <laughs> and then uh, and then Britt, Brit, he played the NVA, and Britt, it was really cool. So I met Britt and his wife at UK Games Expo a couple months ago, and he was like, oh, great to meet you, you know, fan of the show. And... Uh, he mentioned that he was going to WBC and he was like, oh, I'd love to play a game with you. And I'm like, absolutely. And it was so cool that we were able to actually kind of f follow through on that. Oh, he played two games with Yeah, he, he played with us a couple times. But that was just, it was neat. It was like, oh, I don't have time at UK Games Expo because it it's a shorter con and I was with my family doing some bits and pieces. But to then sit down and play a big coin game and he played a couple coins and he mm -hmm. was like, I've got Fire and Lake on my table right now, but that was kind of his first time playing a full game of it, and 
are always fun to play with new players, but always fun to play with people who like, it's almost immediate friends. Well, and, and I love to play, the coin series with new players is such a fantastic experience. We've we've talked about that in yeah. other videos, but it, it it's a combination of utter confusion and despair, and despair <laughs> because you don't know what you're doing or how to do it. And, but then you see when things connect and they, they're able to get some things done and they start to understand, okay, this is what I want to do. Man, to see the joy on his face yeah. was really cool. And, and without question, it is easier to learn those games with other players, especially no doubt. experienced players. No doubt. You can sit at your kitchen table and you can futz around four-handed with it, and that's fine. You can learn it that way. But if you've got three people who kind of half know what they're doing and you sit down and play with them, at least you, you can see the game progress in yeah. a much more confident way at least. Oh yeah. And I think that was, I think that's something that I enjoy being able to provide for people as well. Well, and he did admirably. He finished. Oh yeah. I, I think he finished I lost in that game. He third. Came, he came third, I think. But he was right, he was very close to his victory conditions several times. He was, just couldn't get over the hump. He was only third because I think we, Hosed me him. and Mike try to screw him over at the yeah, end. Yeah, well, which, you know, that's what you do. What you gonna do? So anyway, playing four game or four player coin fire in the lake there was just fantastic. And we played it, it was five and a half, six hour game. Yeah, it was a big one. We got through the third. Uh, yeah, we played, we were playing the full campaign deck and we got through half of it. Yeah. And, then and it, it ended. ended at the third coup round. Which so, is, but great experience. Would love to do that at every convention that we go to. Oh yeah. My number four experience at WBC uh, was sitting down with one of my favorite game designers, Ben Hull. And this is the second year in a row I've got and, to do and it. Let, let, let me, let me <coughs> from an outsider, sure. this was a total geek slobber fest oh, yeah. for Alexander. I don't know how to control myself. I have only seen you skip a couple of times. <laughs> there was skipping involved. It's, it's really there was like skipping. I'm, it, I, I, I wish I could have recorded yeah. it. Uh, uh, Fields of Five, don't know. It's one of my favorite games of all time. Big solitaire game. Uh, really great, really deep, really rich. Uh, and uh, I sat down with Ben at the last WBC we went to, 2019. We did a little interview, but then we... T I did that because, like, the day before, I'd sat down with him, and he'd walked me through all of his other stuff that he was going through, and I'm like, oh, man, I kind of, like... I wish I'd have just had a candid camera on yeah. that could have recorded just, like, an hour of him just... And his, and his friend Davis just experts at what they do and it was so cool and so we sat down the interview was 40 minutes long and we cover Fields of Fire uh, the new Battle of the Bulge expansion upcoming expansions that are going on different Vietnam campaigns and, and uh, bits that are going on they're doing a I think he said there was going to be a Saipan expansion there's uh, he talked about Volume 3 which is being made uh and then there's a World War One version that he's working on. Talked about his musket and bayonet game that they're working on. Musket and Pike, the new uh, dual pack that's coming out soon. And Ben Hull, if you don't know, is a super smart cerebral guy. Uh, and he just is a wealth of both historical and like, you know, military and defense knowledge. And it, I just love talking to him and he's, He's also not shy about what he's got in the works. Uh -huh. so, so, some designers try to be a little bit coy, or they're, and they're like, oh, I don't want to like ruin the surprise for anyone. I want to be. He's well, like, oh, I got this coming and this coming. Well, it's so great. And it was all laid out on the table pretty yeah. much all week. So if you were interested or even knew anything about it, whether he was there or not, you could walk by and see Fields of Fire World War One right there. Yeah. 1914, 19, 1918, it doesn't, take a genius to understand. <laughs> yeah. And he also had his musket and pike and his other games laid out there. So he's not trying to hide anything. That's not what they're... No. You know, and they want to share the game. They want to talk to people, have them play it, get feedback. So... And it was just as enjoyable. I love doing those interviews at the conventions. And uh, he's always just great to interview. He's always got so much to discuss. And his love for his games comes out. I hate to say it. We were setting up Angola. I know. He, I, I had I'm to come like, over. I'm like, yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a bit where I'm getting <laughs> But yeah, that, that was, I'm grateful for him spending the time with us doing that. Uh, but just his, you know, he was just, he's so excited for the new upgrade kit that's coming out with the new rules and, and updated bits and pieces. The deluxe edition. Well, it, it, I think What is, 
It's a, the update kit is just they've rewritten all the rules with Jason okay. Carr and just tidied up and rearranged things and, and made it so it's a bit more accessible because that's one of the things people talk about because it's a very big rule book. And uh, he, he's even he's pumped about that to hopefully get it out to even more people. So yeah, I'm very. Uh, that was just it's just always a highlight because it's games that I love and it's the designer talking about those as well. That's just always a joy. So that yeah. was my number four at WBC. Cool. All right, my number three is Dan Bullock, and we've already talked about his blood and treasure, but I, I want to talk about Dan and, and who he is. He's I always have known he's an intelligent guy. <laughs> yeah. Always have known is that he's a great designer and a designer that is willing to... to thanks, Siri. Uh, to, to keep pushing the envelope, right, and looking for new ways to tell a story of a conflict or historical event. He's just a really fascinating guy. We've played several of his games. We've enjoyed them. So when we had the opportunity, one, to sit down with him and do, a, I think, an hour-long it's, it's about an hour, yeah. video interview with him where he talked about Blood and Treasure, and he's doing an Age of Sail American Revolution game. He's doing a French Revolution game. A little solitaire game that it looks so cool. Well, it, it looks so unique. Yeah. I, I still don't understand how it's going to work, even though he sat there and showed us. That is a very uh, esoteric game. It is. And which is so cool. You, you play as like a, a magistrate that you've just been, but you're like a guy who's been installed as a magistrate. Yeah. You've got no like judicial or law background. And you have a stack of cards, and there's some flavor text about them, and there's some accusations. And, and based on what you judge to, you know, he should be executed or not, mm -hmm. like guilty or not. And you have to kind of pass that judgment, but like you're trying to figure it out from this somewhat vague text of like, yeah. hmm, what should I do? And, you, and the results of that affect your court's legitimacy because you've just execute everyone people like uh, you're just kind of a vindictive turd yeah and then also there was another track but i don't know what it was and they coincide oh, just uh, a lot of very, interesting very weird cool game i think esoteric is a perfect word to, yeah. to describe no that. dice rolling no yeah. points nothing like that but dan is he's just a fascinating individual yes. if i had to put a if i had to put three designers in a room that i wanted to talk to i think it would be dan bullock I think Amabel Holland, and for me it would be Brian Train because he also I think pushes the envelope in a different way. He does more war games, conflict sims. The other two I think do very interesting and cool. Yeah, they dabble in other bits as well. I would love to sit and hear the three of them discuss yeah. games, game design, and and Dan's just he's a very humble guy, very cool guy. He actually dresses more garish, garishly than Alexander, I believe. I mean, based Probably. on his wardrobe there. <laughs> you know, but anyway, I, pleasure and honor to meet Dan. And we played, how many games did we play with him? Uh, he played The Thing Four. with us. He played Angola with us. We played Blood and Treasure. And Nicaea. And Nicaea as well. So we, we had a great opportunity. He went to dinner with us. I felt like we kind of monopolized his time. Yeah, so sorry to everyone else. But anyway, that was a highlight for me, my number three. So my number three was playing The Thing. Uh, we, the Thing, Infection at Outpost 31. Which came out, what, three, four years ago? Yeah. 2018? We tried to demo it in 2018 at Gen Con. And Couldn't that, get in. I cannot tell you how much of a cluster that was. There was literally, we were like 300th in line. One table. And there was one demo which can yeah. hold eight people, but they didn't tell anyone in the line that. They weren't just like, oh, here, you first, eight people, everyone else, go away. Yeah. We queued for 40 minutes, and then they were like, I was oh, thinking JK. there'd be three or four of them, and yeah, they could and take it, 30 people. They, they, they yeah. were, it was a joke. Anyway, we finally got that game, uh, and we played it five-player last week, and then this week, I was like, we're going to bring it to Gen Con, we're going to play it max players, and we did, and it was that was our game to close the night out, we played, <laughs> we played Pericles and Nicaea earlier in the day. So I was knackered, to yeah, we be were honest. And so I was like, let's play something that's light. We can just kind of have a laugh and just yell and scream at each other. And that's almost exactly what happened. Mm -hmm. And it was just, it was a great time. Some new players, some experienced players. Some players some that players. you, to, to see them playing, you would think that they had no idea what was going on. Yeah. 
and then he won the game. There, some very, very canny plays. It was yeah. It was great fun. Ma- Mark won the game, right? Mark won the game, yeah. Just and he, I think he said five words the entire he, time, and he just seemed like a very trustworthy and only individual. evident trustworthy things. And yep. he duped us all, and we brought the thing on the helicopter, and we all yep. lost the game. Yeah, it was, and it was. Marvelous. Yes. It was just, I love those kind of social deduction, everyone's around a table. Hidden traitor. Just, lo, just yapping and talking, <laughs> quoting the movie, yelling and Laughing. accusations, pointing and screaming, people yeah. getting fake upset and fake annoyed. It's great. Well, it was kind of funny. Uh, then two days later, because that was on, no, that was, uh, yeah, that it was, was Thursday. That was Friday night. That was Friday night, so it was the next day. There was a little bit of an altercation with a group that was to the right of us. I don't want to go into the details, but there was some yelling and screaming and accusations that we were, we were cursing. Too, we were too loud. That, yeah. not, not too loud. That we were using foul language. And I'm like, no, we were very loud, but ain't nobody over here dropping F-bombs and yelling and screaming. That was those dudes who, by the way, had scotch and hard liquor. They were also having a good time. Yeah, which is fine. But we were very loud. I mean, I know that room heard us because it was continual laughter. Yeah. Outburst of accusations. Vehement defense of, how dare you impugn my honor? Which, I am not the thing. Which is I'm the thing, by the way. Exactly I'm not the thing. what that game is supposed to do, Absolutely. Right? What the, someone's accusing someone, then they're trying to defend themselves, and then someone else... <laughs> Dog piles, and yes. the other person saying no, you're, and it's all happening all at once, and it's chaos. Yep. And, and you're like, fantastic. I'm still not quite sure who's what at this yeah. point. Yeah, it was just a blast. I loved that. Number three was playing a full eight-player game of the thing. Yeah, uh, absolute riot. And, and that's what those cons are made for. Once again, big multiplayer games. Yes. All right. So, my number two. Let me hold it up there. Big multiplayer game. Yes. Big multiplayer game. We played for the first time a four-player game of Angola. Yes. Angola, originally designed by the Ragnar Brothers. I, I don't know much about them and the rest of their games, um, but then it was, I think it was acquired by MMP several years later and re, uh, republished. And we bought it, I think on a Lark a couple of years ago on an MMP sale. Yeah, we got it, we got it, we got it on the MMP sale that they do in November. Probably paid 30 bucks for it. And, and it's a 30 to $40 produced game it's there's nothing fancy about it it's yeah it's old it's 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 got some nice art but it is a four-player multi-faction team-based game yes so you're playing two of the factions are aligned and win together or lose together Yeah, it's a it's a two play it's a team game yeah it's not it's not like coin where everyone two players are playing together but then have to diverge and stab them in the back and win we're trying to win together. They're trying to win together. Yeah. Very cool game. Uses a very interesting. Uh, you build a command pack. Yes. Which is a face down, pre-constructed order deck that you have to follow in order in turn order. Yeah. So, my brain. I'm putting six cards down. I didn't remember what. After I put them down, didn't remember what I was doing. But that's part of the fun. So you kind of you're surprised when it happens and have a good time and. But such a unique game. I think we it, enjoyed the heck out of it. Yeah. And it's, it, it's for, it shows its age a little bit. Sure. And it's kind of production and some of the way that things are done like this. The plays are not good. But Well, they're literally like a sheet of eight and a half by 11 and, paper. And, and the information on them is not the information you it's need on the plate. It's just printed plane. from the rules. <laughs> yeah. Like, it did, all of the charts and tables were in the rules and not on the plate. But yeah. like... All of that aside, the gameplay itself was really oh, fun, really enjoyable, excellent. and the game was tight, it was tense, your decisions were meaningful, there's this whole, like, after you complete everything, there's bidding for foreign aid, which, which was a, a really mini game. Yep. And, and it, if you bid too much, and the others don't bid as much, you have to give them a victory point. But you're going to get a bunch of cool stuff. Yep, and that should get help less. you. Yep. So there's all this, you know, cost benefit stuff that you're trying to think through. All the table talks open at the table, and so which I to, wish we could have went away from the table, but, that, but that's that would, the way the game but is. That would make the game not what it is. It's sure. like you, you can't hide. Like yeah. It's, it's tough. It's a it's a really fun game. It was very enjoyable. 
very I, enjoyable. The, I think the people who play it love it, and I think it's a game that deserves to have more people play it. And yeah, I think newer players maybe don't see it because it's a little bit older, mm -hmm. but I'm like, if you have the opportunity to sit down with, with players, you should do it. And, and I think we were taught the game by Dan Bullock, right? He had well, played several times, we, so he was able to teach us the game in some ways. Yes. And we were taught the game earlier. Yes, by playing, by playing Crown, Crown and Crescent, Crescent for, coming up from MMP, which was the same system, tweaked a bit to fit the parameters of the American Revolution in this in the colony of South Carolina. Yeah. So, which that game we demoed that that was amazing. Yes, but it uses some of the same fundamental systems. So when Dan was teaching us the game, we were like, oh, oh yeah, I already knew about the card pack building and yep. the. the generally how the movement things would work that's quite that's different but yeah it was it was very neat to play that that was a blast i agree so yeah that was my number two and frankly while, while it was a long game we played for six hours it was very long but we and we, that was our first game in fact it was too. but it it was so engaging i oh, can't yeah. wait to play it again someday yes my number two uh, experience at WBC was playing a four-player game of Pericles yes. from Mark Herman. Great game, by the way. Yeah, the game itself was is really good. Uh, we first played it in like 2017 when it first came out, and we were pretty much brand new. Yeah, we we'd been war doing gamers. war gaming for maybe a year, maybe a little bit. But like that was, I remember we played it, and we were playing it two-player. And well, and I want to say one thing. We had played Churchill. Oh yeah, a couple of times, and really enjoyed it. So Love it's, Churchill. It's a similar game to Churchill, using the you know the, the the debating kind of around that conference table. But there's some other elements to it. But it's a four player game, and as you play on these team, it's it's very different from Churchill. Yes, and uh, that was. I remember I kind of liked it, and I'm like, I know there's something here, but it was hard to get the players together for that and, and ever revisit it. So we took it, and I was like, we're going to do this. We're much more experienced war gamers now. Yes. And it, we played it, and it was so good. Mm -hmm. I, I understood what I was... Mechanically, Mechanic I'm to make still it not sure strategically yeah, I strategically, get everything, but strategically still a tough one. I need I need another couple plays, and I think it's going to click a lot better. But the, but it was so cool playing it mm -hmm. and, and understanding this this but button does this and this does this, and I felt lost kind of when we played it the first time. Oh, like, there's I no know doubt. there's something here, and it was it was enjoyable, but I'm like, well, the first time I got the debating part. I understood the debating part when we first played. Yeah. Where I struggled was it was taking the debate, putting it onto the map, and trying to win the war. And trying to win the war that way. I it, it was disconnected for me because Churchill, I thought, was way more easy to understand what and where you well, were trying it, yeah, to do it's, it. It's much more straightforward. Yeah, in that game. linear tracks, and so uh, loved it five years ago. But man, after playing it, I, I'm like, I'm in love with that game again, and I wanna, I wanna play it again it, it, immediately. It, it was, it was always a game where we would talk about Mark Herman designs, or people would ask about Pericles specifically, and they're like, oh, but, you know, I'm thinking about this. What do you think about it? And I'm like, I'm pretty sure it's amazing, <laughs> but I was never, but I'm, but I'm not. I'm not smart enough to say whether or not it is now. Yeah. But, but being much more experienced, playing the full four players, playing it through, it was like, yes, I could verify this is a good game. I enjoy it. I yeah. don't know how accurate of a simulation of the Peloponnesian War it is because I'm not a historian in that way, but as a game, it was extremely fun to play. Yeah. And it was in, it was intense. There were a lot of rules, but it was great. Well, and we played with, once again, Mike Heckman, yes. our friend from St. Louis, and Pete, who was from Kent. Yeah, he's from, right? he's, he calls himself a, a Londoner. Londoner. I think he was might be originally from Kent, but yeah, he's, he Got was it. all the way over from England. Yeah. Uh, and he played. Uh, he was an affable chap. Yes, and we, we played, <laughs> and I thought we were getting crushed, and then we ended the war, and I accidentally won it. <laughs> because the, the scoring at the end of that game, kind of similar to Churchill, sure. balloon. And, yes. Uh, you you kind of end the game, you end the war. And you guys really won it. The Athenians won based on... Territory. 
your control. That, that's really that was what it really came down the to. swing, and I'm like, dang it. And I had won that last debate, and so between the two Athenian factions, we had a swing of a lot of points. Yes. And so I was way in the back. Yeah. And I overtook him, and then we ballooned with our points from that. And yeah. it, but it but it ended up being it wasn't a total blowout though. Which, no, it was very which, close. Which was really cool to see. It was within like everybody was within about five to ten points. Yeah, which I think is not unreasonable. Sure. And if the Spartans had taken one extra area, I it think, would have been yep. on a knife edge. I, I like, agree. W- like a, you could, I wouldn't have been able to predict. But we took our happened. eye off the ball. Well, we it, didn't remember. <laughs> it was really, in essence, an area control uh, game. Yeah. That, that's how you're going to get a, a lot of your you, points. Yeah, a lot. I, I will say this. I had a blast with that because Mike was my partner. He re, I was the Erie Ponted. He was the, I can't remember the other name of the... The, the Aegead, I the think. The Aegead. Uh, we were Sparta. And he crushed me the first two rounds on the debating. I couldn't get strate- Stratagos tokens. It was just very... It did not go well for me. So I took a different tack to that third... And I totally destroyed him, and I got a ton of honor because I went for issues that gave honor. Yep. And I think he took his eye off the ball and forgot that ultimately the game was about gaining honor. And so so I kind of came back and I overtook him, which was hilarious to me. Yeah. But yeah, great game. Love the mechanics with the debating, and you have your, uh, what do they call it, the brain trust? Yeah, with so your king. Yeah, your entourage that you can use oh. to save cards or you can pop one for your brain trust. So uh, cool. Yeah. Just such such a well-designed game that is fun, interesting. I think it's fairly historical. Mark, I know, does it, his research. It, it's historical enough for me. Right. Which, But we, we had a blast. I can't wait to play that one again. Yeah, That's going to be a game we're lugging to different cons and playing. It was a mixture of both. This was an extremely good game. Mm-hmm. It was also fun to play at max players, but also it was almost like this relief of like yeah. I've, this old kind of friend that's been on a shelf for a while to replay it and for it to be what I thought it was going to be. Yes. It was like, oh, yes. I, to have your assumption about the game or your gut yeah, feeling kind like of I've, verified. I finally get it. And, yeah. it was, and it was just kind of a, a, kind of a little bit of a reflective moment of how far we've come as war games. Yeah. So like, I remember playing it the first time and I wanted <laughs> to pull my hair out and I kind of had yes. a headache by the end of it. And this one was like much more reasonable. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. okay. Kind of get it a bit more. Miles. Yeah. Continue yeah, g- great game. Enjoyed it. Yeah. And, uh, Great, great job, Mark. It, all his games are great, So I, I think. so. Number one moment at WBC. Yep. And, and I think we both share yes. the same number one moment, so we can probably just kind of talk about, talk oh, about the, thing. the moment. So Greg Gregory M. Smith, Greg, uh, is a guy that we have had a lot of correspondence with since 2016. Um, if you don't know, Greg Smith is a mastermind solitaire war game designer, right? He started with Silent Victory, The Hunters, The Hunted, and now he's made more sub-games like Beneath the Med. Um, He's got Sensui Khan coming. Sensui Khan's coming up. But then he's he's branched out into uh, air games like Night Fighter Ace, Interceptor Ace, Bomber. uh, He's got America Bomber. America Bomber. Defending America. Yep. Uh, just so many different. He's now got tank games because he was a tank uh, guy in in. He was a tank commander in Desert Storm. Yes, in Desert Storm, right? Um, but anyway, we we've got a good affinity with Greg. I would call him a friend. Yes, I think you would as well. Would. We when we see each other, it's like, oh, I haven't seen you for a year. You know, blah blah blah. We 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 have a good time. So we showed up. Actually. It was before we showed up. Yeah, we were driving there. Yep. And he was, he was, did he call? He called. He called. So we're about an hour and a half, maybe two hours outside of uh, the Seven Springs Resort and get a call from Greg Smith. So we take the call and he's, he's like planning our evening for us. <laughs> when do you guys get here? Well, we'll be there around 2.30, need to check into the room. We should be down in the game room by... 3.30-ish. That's kind of what we told him. He goes, oh, okay, great. Well, we're going to do this and this and this. 
And I'm like, oh, okay, Greg, that, that's cool. And then we're going to go to dinner. And then, because he had to leave. Yeah, because he, he actually had, he had to leave. He had, to leave. <laughs> he had something come up. So we, we get there, we get unpacked. I'm a little excited, looking forward to seeing some of his games. Yeah, because you know you're getting new stuff with him. Oh, no he, doubt. He always shows all his prototypes, and he's always got a lot. Well, he has, I think he has nine games currently, either yeah. in his finishing stages of design, design, middle stages, early stages, nine different freaking games. Yeah. The guy's just, a, he's a machine. And, and his games are really good. I've always enjoyed them. Yes. So anyway, we go down. We, we, we get over the pleasantries of, hey, how you doing? Haven't seen you for a while, blah, blah, blah. We sit down, and he shows us his, his new upcoming game that is, is going to be from Compass. It's a gladiatorial game yes. called Blood and Sand. Now, I think he's but, thinking about changing that name. I think name. he has to change it yeah. there's already a Blood and Sand game out there. But it, it, it's a very easy card-based game. You can play solitaire, but I think it's made more for two-player where you're going to be the, a, a a Lannister managing your Ludus, right? Your your stable of gladiators. Yes. You have to buy them food. You have to buy them weapons. You have to buy them me- herbs and, and medicine to take care of their wounds. Um, and it's a card game where we're doing combat based on the Down in Flames system. Yes. Very cool. Very cool Im- and implementation. It, and it's <laughs> it's it's quick and dirty yes. as a game. And I loved how that fit in with you are a guy fighting. Yes. You play an attack card. And, it, and on it, it's like sweeping slash. That's mm-hmm. you going, that's you literally going, Wah! and yep. then you play a block. That's you going, off my shield. Mm-hmm. And you're playing the cards back and forth. And it's, you know, the old, all the old hand management from Down in Flames. Well, and you're trying to get position with advantage as but it, well. But the fast card play is so, it makes me feel what you would be in a combat where it's like sure at it. Yep. that's how people fight they go like this yeah and uh is that how they, one more time yeah okay that's how they do it okay great i've been in lots of fights you're a gladiator you yes but like the <laughs> card play is fast and furious like the combat would be and so the the pace of the game reflects the pace of your fight and that just feels really good when yes. the mechanics feel like at the same like pace that the action and- would be yeah. No one wants to spend two hours playing the 30 second game, which you get in like some air war games. Right? Sure. That's not fun. But, a, a, you know, a 30 second fight where it's the 30 seconds of us beating each other, that's, yeah. that's great. I love that. So, you know, we played this game. We, we I destroyed Alexander. Yeah. It was, I, I don't it know was about like, destroyed. It was, it was very like close. tight, 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 and then killing blood. Killing blood, you're did, dead. Oh my God. So it, it very cool game. I look forward to that game, and I think you should look forward to that game as well because yes. I think that's going to be an awesome game. Well, and the, uh, I, I'm going to say it. It has miniatures. He had little miniatures yeah. which had been 3D printed. He paid it up, and apparently those have been green. Yeah, apparently Bill so, Thomas has said, "Yep, if, we're going to put some minis in if there." If that's the case, that'd be amazing. Yeah, very, very cool. Uh, so look forward to that. But we played this game. We had a blast playing it, and then he goes, "Well, I, I've." And he was very excited. I, I, yeah, yeah, he had he had a sort of a, a nervous excitement. It, it, there were some wait. jitters. He was he was just. And I thought to myself, what, what is going? On? Like, Greg, what, why are you this excited? I, I'm your friend. I know that. I'm glad to see you too. But he goes under the table. And he pulls out a long, thin uh, cardboard box, and he says, "Hey, I've got something special for you guys to kind of commemorate this moment." and and he said to show his gratitude and in no ways or shape or means bribing us to gain <laughs> no. good, good media coverage or, or reviews in the future. But he opens this box and he hands to us, both of us, yes. personalized, said WW, WBC 2022, had my name on there, had your name on there. Yeah, but engraved into the wood. Of a sword, right? A, a, a gladius... And I can't remember the name of it. I think it's called a, a Rindus or a Rudus or something. R- Rudus, Rudus, I think, is what it was. It's a wooden sword that a gladiator would have earned after years in the ring yeah, X amount winning his freedom. X amount of fights. If you survive, you win your freedom. Yeah. They give you the wooden sword. You know, you've know, you watched the movie Gladiator. That, yeah. That, 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 guy, that happens to that guy. Yep. And he like so he gave us that is just a, a really nice gesture and, and i was like whoa i was really blown away geeking out i, I thought this is the coolest freaking thing i've ever 
ever seen, ever been given. I felt honored. We we were actually talking. My gosh, we gotta. Hey, we I'm have a, to buy a case. I'm immediately and, online looking at getting a sword plinth or whatever the hell those are called to like put it on a wall to mount it because I, it was just such a nice just, and genuine moment. But it was it was so cool to to share that with him and and see his excitement and see our friendship and I I, I had a blast with that. I'll remember that for the rest of my life. Yes. Um, I, and and I'll have that memento to, to kind of remind me about that. So I think that's going to be my all-time moment in any convention I mean, that I've ever was, been to. If you don't know Greg personally, he is such a genuine person. Well, he's he's a he's a down-to-earth guy yeah. who who he knows what he does and he loves what he does, and he loves people. He loves to see people play his games and enjoy them. So it's it, it's just so cool to see him gain that enjoyment and, yeah. and our interactions and the games and he's a very unpretentious, mm -hmm. very giving person. And well, he, he, and he, yeah, how many times does he say he's like, I just want people to have fun playing my game. Well, he says, and that fun that he can impart, he wants that to be what yeah. he gives. He, I think he said something like, "Well, you can say whatever you want to say about me." He says, you can trash my games, but yeah, you can't trash you me. You can't trash me. That's what it and, was. And I defy anyone to do it because <laughs> He's a can't. good dude. He, yeah. yeah he's, he, and and I, anyway, Greg's a special guy. Uh, really enjoy our interactions with him and his friendship. And I'll remember that forever. Yeah. That will be the highlight that for was, me. That was amazing. Of WBC 2022, but probably forever. <laughs> That's going to be hard to top. Well, yeah. Frankly. But, you know, even from that, we parlayed that into doing some American Tank A's, which is Atlantic yeah. Sentinels, he showed yep. us that, and he's got Panzer Ace and Soviet Tank T thirty four. yeah. He had all his prototypes of that. I just, it was, it's always a joy to sit down and play with him, and that was yeah. like a real special moment at the end of that uh, Not Blood and Sand game. And ironically, <laughs> it was the first thing we did. Yeah. Right, I mean, he, it was he could not wait yeah. to like just because we haven't seen him for yeah. three years. It's been 2019 since we did the last one. It, 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 just so you know, I wanted to share this story too. Greg makes T-shirts for all his games. Yes. So when he has a game coming out, he literally takes the cover and he he puts it on a T-shirt. Not himself. He orders them. So about every six to nine months, we get a package, in the unannounced, yeah. un. Uh, you know, he doesn't inform us. He sends us shirts, right? And it's it's cool. I I have almost all of them. I think I ruined one. I got a, a big taco stain on one of them. I had to throw it away. Ultimately, I couldn't get it out. Um, but I have those in my closet, and from time to time, I wear them. He says they're the the lawn mowing and the plumbing fixing t-shirts, <laughs> but that that's not true. I actually wear them other places, but. That, that's the kind of relationship we've developed, and he sent me a roll of toilet paper as a joke during <laughs> during COVID, because he, <laughs> he, he called me on the phone, because we were trying to set up that video interview yes. that we did yes. three years ago, and I, I think I was complaining, oh my gosh, went out again today and tried to find some freaking toilet paper, and I couldn't find any. <laughs> I, I, I was just saying it, right, because we were all dealing with that. Well, he sent me a roll of toilet paper, and it once I again, know that. unannounced, shows up. I'm like, what the hell is this? Open it up, and I just, I, I laughed. I called him. We had a, a back and forth, and I used that toilet paper quick. You know, we had seven people in our house. But uh, we finally found toilet paper, and then we got on a service that they send us a case of toilet paper every month. Yeah. So during the next pandemic... We're, we're going to be the warlords of toilet paper. Yes. <laughs> I, I have like five cases in my basement. <laughs> so anyway, great experience. Had a great time with Greg and was good to see him and, and really appreciated that interaction. Yeah. And I, I think that experience, I couldn't agree more on all counts. That epitomizes, I think, our and a lot of other what people's Wargaming experience is. at WBC specifically yeah. and Wargaming in the wider sense of it because... WBC, this our third year going, mm -hmm. and I've said this a couple of times. I know uh, that guy. We, I recognize him. Yeah, yeah I recognize all, almost everyone who's there because yeah. the same people go every year, and everyone's saying hi, shaking hands. Oh, we played a game last year. I played a game yeah. five years ago. Or it's like the same guys playing in the same tournaments and all friends. 
it's such a great community there at WBC specifically. I think wargaming generally is pretty much like right. That. You know, there's not there's not that many war gamers out there comparatively. And when we get together, everyone's very grateful that there's other yeah. historical nerds who are like yeah. playing the same cardboard cannon. I think sometimes the war gaming community unfairly gets a gets a a bad rap about being unfriendly, unwelcoming, yeah. un, not open. And while I think some of that might be true in some ways, uh, yeah, I, yeah. I still think they're they're all good people that are trying to share a common love and interest in history by coming to these freaking things, right? Yeah, you always get those, I think a lot of that bad rep comes from internet, which is... Sure. Sure. But I think when people finally get together, I think everyone's a bit, bit more on their best behavior Yeah. and usually typically much more social. Very open and welcoming. Very. I mean, we were opened and welcomed. Yeah, well, we, yeah. We were new. Nobody knew us in 2017 or 2018 was the first year. Yeah. And, and we got... And, and <laughs> Maurice Fitzgerald from Moe's Gaming Table. Great dude. He walked out the front of the convention center to meet us as we were walking in so that we would even find how to get in. And, and welcomed us with open arms and... Introduced us to some I, people, walked in. That is the kind of community that I think yes. that Wargaming really, really can and does yeah. have. And, and David Heath was like that as well as, as a publisher. O always, always Lock great. and load, yeah. And, and, and WC, there's so many other designers there. We sat down and did a trillion interviews this time yeah. around as well. And we have 14 videos coming. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and, and it's just, it's such a great experience, I mm -hmm. think the kind of friendships that you can make and develop like we have with Greg is just kind of an also an example of you know yeah. come to these cons do yourself a favor yep I, and, I, I and, think and that join in. people because I know I was nervous I don't know if you remember because sometimes I think you don't remember some of the elements but I, I was the one that said hey you know there's this word, word, board, world board gaming championship in way out in the middle of nowhere in in Pennsylvania. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, like guys like Mark Herman and Volko Runke and they go to those things. So yeah. I was like, I think we did it two weeks before we decided to go in 2018. Yeah. And I remember buying a badge was kind of hellish at that time. Yes. Well, <laughs> well, and the, the website's not it's, uh, great. It is from the nice. But it's those people are the, the, the couple that we interacted with to those salt of the earth people. Yeah, I can't remember their names. Everyone is always really chill when yeah. you're actually kind of there and doing it. But if you have any hesitation or any reservation, let that out the window. Come, we'll introduce yeah. ourselves. C you come can, and say hi to us. We will never not have a chat with you, and, and we can hook you up with other people if that's what you're looking for. There, there are some people that took advantage of that, but that's okay. We're just not yeah. those kind of people that are going to say, "Hey, get out of here! I got to finish my dinner." Or no, we're getting ready to play a game. We're we're just we want to talk to people. So join us at WBC in 2023. Yeah, we we we'd be there. We'll be. It, it's always at the end of January first. We're booking the hotel. Yep, we are. So anyway, I had a great experience. Really enjoyed it. I'm exhausted. Uh, we're about an hour and a half away from home, and I can't wait to to get there. But. This video is an hour long, and that was just our top fives. Oh. And I cannot tell you how many more great oh my experiences gosh. that we had as well. Well, There's, I want to talk about the food. No, I don't. We'll I'm do sorry. that. We'll do that in a debrief. <laughs> That's fine. But yeah. But yeah, we had so many great experiences. Yeah, and 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 your top five could have been my top five. Yep. I just happened to be writing it down at that y second, yep. and that because everything was so great. I was, yeah. It was a blast. So I appreciate you all very much for tuning in and sticking with us on this car journey. I've been Alexander from theplayersaid.com. And I'm Grant.